Hey there, today I'm going to be looking at the Rudy Project Ride and Running Prescription Glasses. I say I'm going to be looking at them, but uh, I'm also going to be looking through them. So a little bit about my eyesight. I'm uh, long-sighted, short-sighted, I have astigmatism, my prescription has deteriorated over the years, and in this video I'm going to talk you through how my eyesight deteriorated, uh, what methods I took to try and uh, ensure that I could go running safely and in comfort, uh, and how that changed over the years. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the Rudy Project Ride and Running Sunglasses. It's hard to say all in one go. Uh, anyway, I'm going to talk about those and, and what I think they're going to do for me. I'm going to show some clips of me running in them, a bit on the turntable with some specifications, and then I'm going to discuss them and see if I can recommend them. Okay, my eyesight first started to deteriorate when I started in architecture school in uh, 1980. And I can remember my friend David pointing to some clock and saying, uh, what time is that? And I said, what clock? Uh, so time to go to the opticians, obviously. Uh, and in those days, uh, what happened was when you got a pair of glasses, well, they were made of, uh, you know, glass. Like, like, who knew? And if you dropped them, they smashed. And so if you ran in them, you had to tie them to your head. Uh, but there was always this danger that they would smash. So in bright sunlight, you had a problem because I would suffer from glare. So I decided to get some prescription sunglasses. And so I got these made, but they had a big disadvantage in that uh, if you, you had them on and you're driving the car and suddenly you go, you didn't, don't realize there's a tunnel ahead. Next thing you're in a tunnel and you're in the dark, you're wearing sunglasses and it's not that easy to see. Or you'd go into a store and you'd have the sunglasses on and the store attendant would think, God, why is, why is this guy talking to me with sunglasses? Would he not just take them off? Uh, so you ended up having to carry two pairs, a regular pair and then the other ones. And that largely was a pain. Uh, and then they uh, came up with uh, photochromatic lenses and I would wear those and they would react to light, I think they were called. Maybe that was the trade name at the time. Uh, but they were really, really slow to react. I mean, you'd be out the tunnel and all the way on through Mersey by the time you'd, you'd actually, these things had calmed down. Uh, and so um, they were very slow and very clunky. In 1990, I was still running in glasses, but this time made a Perspex. And you can see from this picture of me running with Team Runner's Need in uh, the Windsor Half Marathon, uh, that they're on my head and they're basically just tied to my head. Uh, back in those days, Runner's Need was a small, uh, it was a great little store in Camden, an independent running shop. It's now a huge chain. But back then I used to run with them. As, yeah, start the running. Two years later, uh, you can see that I'm running in contact. Well, you can't see I'm running in contact lenses, but I have to be because otherwise I'd be hitting the trees. Uh, so I, contact lenses have been developed and originally there was gas permeables. I mean, I thought they were ghastly, ghastly permeables. They were horrible, they'd scratch your eyeballs out. But for running, they were okay. And then uh, Nirvana arrived in the form of AccuView. I think I've got some AccuView here. Uh, so disposable contact lenses by Johnson & Johnson. Fantastic. First of all, I think I w wore them on, uh, you, there was a two week cycle and then there were daily disposables. And they were the savior, you could pop them in, uh, you could see, you could add sunglasses if you wanted to or not want to. Uh, and because they were daily, you, all that cleansing regime you could, was much less intensive. Uh, great. Also, they have been making, making some of them in Ireland, in Askeaton and Limerick, uh, as well as the United States. This was great for years. I could just, it was just no brainer stuff. Wear glasses when you want to wear glasses, wear contacts when you want to wear glasses. It was fantastic. But then, and initially my, my short sightedness was getting worse, but just got thicker contact lenses and slightly thicker glasses and away you went. And then what happened was I started to get long sighted as many of us do. You start, you take the phone and you look at the phone and then you're kind of holding the phone out there. So I became long sighted and short sighted. And one pair of AccuView couldn't cope with both scenarios. So I tried all sorts of solutions recommended by the optician. I tried something called monovision. Now monovision is where you wear uh, a lens that in one eye that will see up close and the other eye will see into the distance and then your brain figures it out. Well, my brain isn't that smart. I, I couldn't figure it out. Many of you can probably use monovision. I couldn't. Uh, so that was a no-brainer, but I tried it and, and the National Autometry Centre here in Dublin is part of the University, the Technological University of Dublin and they gave me all sorts of stuff to try. So then they gave me these uh, other contact lenses which had sort of concentric rings in them, I think, and they were designed that kind of like very focused. When you looked down, you saw some, you saw the text, and when you looked up, I couldn't be having those. I just, they were just like, I don't know, I, I couldn't, my brain couldn't figure those ones out either. So then they gave me something which had weights in them for the astigmatism, and, and uh, so it rotates the contact lenses. Anyway, I couldn't see with those either. Uh, or not, not well enough. So I decided to just go back to wearing the regular AccuView 
with a prescription that I could see very well in the distance or road signs or traffic or any danger, but it was really tricky to see the watch. So I started uh, using Map My Run and I'd get audio sounds and it would go, you know, you're going at such and such a pace and such and such a distance. And then I ran a half marathon, this thing was going off all the time. And all the other runners were kind of around me were kind of looking at me, even though it was socially distanced and all that. So I decided to abandon that. Around the same time, I got a Stride Footpod, uh, which I really, really like uh, and uh, gives me data. And Stride, it's wonderful. The, the, the home screen is really customizable. And so I would set it to either two or three windows, which I could just see. And uh, it was a bit tricky, but I, I, could, I could see them. I could make them out. A bit fuzzy. You know, I was going to show you some pictures, but faking that would be, would be tricky. So, so you can customize the screens, and I found that really easy and uh, largely is successful. Uh, and then Stride recently introduced training plans. I've done videos about that. Um, but on, on, the, on the video, on the Stride training plans, there are six metrics. So you're trying to look at six things. Now, six things on, a, on an Apple Watch screen is going to be smaller than three, three screens. So I couldn't see. Uh, and so I tried a solution. So this was my solution, a magnifying glass. So the idea was you'd run along and hold the magnifying glass. It'd be, I guess I was, my plan was go around your head and, and away you go. Uh, that turned out to be completely impractical. The Apple Watch, the Series 6, uh, is, is advertised as being always on. What they don't tell you is it's always on in native Apple apps. When it would stride, it won't, it's not always on. So by the time you, you turn the watch over, stuck this to align it to your vision, the thing had turned off. Uh, so that was annoying. Uh, and the other thing that's incredibly annoying about the Apple Watch is that uh, a lot of times it, there's no dedicated stop button. So you have to press the screen. Sometimes it just doesn't work, even though it's not wet. When it's wet, it doesn't work. So you bring a towel, all that sort of stuff. I mean, Apple, if you want to do a serious runner's watch and that's what you think you're doing, then put a simple stop button. It's not hard or else don't tell everybody you're the world's greatest running watch designers because you're not. So to solve all those problems and to allow me to use a watch other than this, I decided to get a pair of prescription running glasses. Pretty quickly on the internet, I came across uh, some uh, recommendations for Rudy Project glasses. They looked really good. Um, they're from Italy. I'd never heard of them, but they've been around a long time and have a good have a great reputation uh, and they've got some very nice videos online of people running in them and all that and most of it's well explained. So I tried to find out where I could get a set of them and so I went to uh, Oryx Sports in the UK, I think it's oryxsports.com, had a website with all of the different uh, glasses on it and they had a very convenient little chatbot because it's very hard to find, you know, you're looking on the internet it doesn't answer all the questions. One of the reasons I try to make these videos which may or may not be helpful depending on how good I am at them or how interested you are. But anyway, um, so I went on to this thing and I thought it was this chatbot and you could kind of ask questions and then this chatbot was called Johnny and after a while, unlike the Apple stuff or sometimes with Amazon, or, I thought, hang on, this, this, this Johnny is real. <laughs> so I was able to, uh, particularly I knew it was real when Johnny suggested I ring him. <laughs> so, uh, so I rang Johnny and it was really helpful between emails and between um, the chatbot thing and just ringing. Fantastic. I was able to fully understand what the different type of riding glasses do because there's loads of them. And I decided to go for, ultimately I decided to go for um, the project Rudy running, uh, ride and running. Yeah, it's riding as the model and running as the type because it had little vent holes and I'm running a snood most of the time at the moment and I didn't want to risk any sort of ventilation things. Now, the other thing I decided to do was um, I'm running at night primarily because uh, it's winter and, you know, running after work and all of that. And so I'm primarily running around. So I don't need sunglasses at night. I don't have the same problem I had in the 80s. Uh, so I decided to go for photochromatics um, and I figured the technology has moved on. Uh, I decided to get photochromatic so that I could see in the dark. And where are they? They're here. So, so when I stick them on, uh, they're clear. They're pretty much always clear indoors, maybe with a slight tint. You go outside and you'll see it in the running videos that they go dark. Uh, so, so I decided to get those. Uh, the buying experience was easy. I went to uh, the National Optometry Center uh, in TU Dublin. They gave me a prescription. Uh, I sent uh, a pair of old lenses to uh, Orex Sports so that they could measure the pupil distance, the distance between my uh, eyes, and away we went. Back came the, uh, the glasses, and I've been trying them out since. Let's uh, see what Rudy Project have to say, and uh, put them on the turntable and see some specifications. Ryden Running is the evolution of our iconic model designed specifically for running and trail running. Ryden Running 
God, how do you say those, put those two words together? Combines all the performance features of riding, lightness, durability, maximum adjustability, and style, with a new lens shape which maximizes the field of vision all while protecting the eyes. The ride and running lenses boasts upper and lower vents to minimize the risk of fogging. So we'll see if that's true. The main difference with the running glasses is there's some, some vents here and some vents up at the top. As I said, I don't know if it makes much difference, but that's, uh, that limits uh, in the photochromatics. This is the only color frame you can get. Now the lenses swap in and out and I'll try and do a bit of that in a minute. Um, but you could mix and match, except you can't buy them mix and matching. You can buy the frames or whatever in a later stage, you could probably buy a replacement lens. But you can't sort of from the start say, I'll have the yellow frame with the blue lens and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the lenses aren't that expensive and they're easy to swap in and out. So do these things work? Well, they're lightweight. They're incredibly lightweight. They're 26 grams. I think one of my ears is lower than the other because my glasses are nearly always twisted, which is very annoying. Uh, but anyway, uh, from when I look at these videos. But anyway, they, they're incredibly light. Uh, they're super comfortable. You can adjust the nose pad. Um, they do exactly what Project Rudy say they would do. Uh, I can see the watch perfectly. It's 9.21 uh, and 12 seconds. I, can, I don't have any hesitation. Uh, you'll see in the video, it goes really, really dark. Um, and you get this lovely, uh, I wore them in the Phoenix Park video running in the early dawn a few weeks ago. So you might see them there. And they went this lovely ruby color. So you have run, it's, it is actually really nice. I'll probably try a couple of different lenses and I'll give you a go at showing you how you swap them out now. So you take them off. These are the prescription inserts. So this clips in uh, pretty simply. So I'm gonna take them out, I won't put them back in. Uh, and this is the bit where I have to, I'm, this is just a blur. So let's see, so here, here they are, uh, lightweight. They weigh on with their feather light uh, and they just clip in and out very easily. So I'd only take them out because I want to clean these or clean the lenses. And so you're left with a pair of effectively very lightweight sunglasses. Uh, and I'm gonna have a go at taking in out the lenses. So the frame is really, it just took me a while. Oh gosh, I got, the, I got them out in no time. Basically you clip that up uh, and you flick them out. There's a little, uh, we'll see how the focus works on this camera. Uh, there's a little, clip in there and the clip in there so they clip into a slot in the nose and the glass is really flexible uh, i want I, it usually takes me ages to pop them in again if i get it in 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 no time i'll do it but essentially you uh no pressure on, on the telly uh, so you do that and then you click them in there so that's that that one in i'm always afraid i'm going to break them when i do that uh, but i'll have a go again uh, and again, I, I thought I might try and get a couple of different lenses, or again, I could try a different frame at some stage. Uh, they're also available, so that popped in without any bother. Clearly I'm, I'm getting better at this, so they're back to normal. And then you just clip these things in. Now we're indoors, so they don't go dark, which is, which is, which is great. But outside, I tested them yesterday, I brought them outside, took them out, and about 30 seconds to go fully dark in the bright sunshine, which I think is pretty good. Uh, I don't know how long it takes to go back but but not long they're not like the ones i had in the 80s they're really super i they're like i don't know it's just like a great solution i mean why was i waiting so long they've been around since 1980 these cost 166 pounds and 99 pence yeah it's pence <laughs> and uh I'll, I'll try and do some euro conversion in the, in the descriptions um but uh, once I got my complicated lenses, they were about 460 pounds. So I pay a lot more for lenses than I do for the frames. That's fairly typical. Uh, I looked in the United States and I think they're in sportsorx.com. It's kind of like the reverse. And uh, they're pretty much the same uh, price for the frames, excepting that that's ones in dollars and ones in pounds. Um, and I guess, again, the, the lenses, you know, they're bespoke. Um, and I'll link, I'll show the prescription here uh, of what my lenses are. But so you can see they're fairly heavy. They're minus five, minus six, something like that, with all sorts of other adjustments in there. So would I recommend these glasses? Well, I've been running in them for about two to three weeks. Uh, I ran 18K the other day. Uh, I ran 12K in the park and freezing. I've been running around, so I have a good bit of experience. They're fantastic. They do exactly what I want to do. In the dark, they don't, they don't uh, uh, turn dark, so I can look at the watch, read it very easily. And they're lightweight. They don't at all jiggle about. They don't, I'm not worried about losing them or f letting them fall off. Uh, they're very easy to swap lenses. I don't, I don't imagine doing that very much. I really only take them out to clean them, but I'm so finicky that largely when I, <laughs> when I take them out to clean them, my fingerprints go all over them. So it's a bit of a kind of zero sum game, but anyway. Uh, I think they're great. You're probably better at it than I am. 
uh, their super solution. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. Also, because I filmed videos of going out to do stuff, I was forever either wearing contact lenses, in which case I couldn't read what was on the GoPro, or I was wearing these and trying to run and stick them in my pocket uh, on the one of the videos, the most popular video I ever made. They fell out as I was running along, and then I'm blindly going down Shrewsbury Road or Aylesbury Road in Dublin, looking in the grass, pawing around for glasses. I mean, very embarrassing. Eventually, I found them by <laughs> looking, looking back at where they fell out of the pocket on the video. Anyway, to avoid all those things, a pair of these are fantastic. I'm really thrilled with them. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it uh, instructive. It'd be great if you put some comments below. I'll put links in descriptions and all the usual stuff. Um, I'm thrilled with the glasses. They allow me to do a lot of things that I couldn't do before. And in particular, I can probably look at buying a certain type of Garmin watch or, or of course, or something else, a dedicated running watch to get over the issues I have with the Apple watch. Because finally I can see when there's a lot of text on the screen on those kind of watches, there's a lot of text. And unless I had those, I couldn't see them in my contact lenses. So I'm absolutely thrilled with them. I don't think they're that expensive for what you get. Uh, and I thoroughly recommend them. Uh, there'll be a subscribe button there if you want to watch some stuff or some other related videos. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.